these houses, which are our next aspect, which I call sky in the beginning. I call it sky because if we look at the part of sky that's directly above us, that is the tenth house. If we look at the part of the sky that's 15 degrees above the horizon and 15 degrees below the horizon, that's the first house where the sun rises in the east. Where the sun sets in the west, that 15 degrees above and below is the seventh house. And the, the sky above us is divided into 30 degree segments relative to that, giving us the houses. So the place above us in the sky is always the place above us in the sky. It's always the 10th house, just by fact of it being above us. Um, there are multiple house systems that sometimes they change the size of the houses depending how far away from the equator you are. For this general uh, overview and foundation, we are working primarily with equal houses, meaning they're all 30 degree portions. So if we are, if we circulate the entire earth, it's 360 degrees. And if we are dividing that 360 degree um, into 30 degree portions, we get 12. So 12 houses. And we can see half are above us and half are below us. Half we can't see. So that means directly below us, the sky that if we went through the earth and that sky that's out that direction, that's the fourth house. Where the sky directly above us is the tenth house. The sky that's just above where the sun is setting is the eighth house. The sky that's just where the sun is rising is the first house. And so it actually, the houses are going, if we wanted to start counting, that sky just up where the sun rises is the first. And then if we went below 30 degrees where we can't see, that's the second house. Again, 30 more degrees below, and that's the third house. Directly below us is the fourth house, which represents home, directly below us. Then we have the next 30 degrees, which is the fifth house. The next 30 degrees is the six, and then we start rising. We, we've gotten to the horizon, and that's the seventh. And so now from the west, we're moving upwards. And so that first, because that seventh house, it's 15 above, 15 below. It's right in the middle there. And then the next 30 degrees is the eighth house. The next 30 is the ninth. That next 30 is directly above us. It's the 10th house. Then the next 30 going towards the sunset, going towards the east, is the... Hmm? Sunrise. Going towards the... West. Going, no, no, going towards the east, the, 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 the sunrise. Because it goes, it goes below. From the east, it goes below, towards the west, and then up above and over. So just before that sunrise is the 12th house. Now, in the day, we have the sun going what looks like opposite, through. It's move, it looks like it's moving backwards. But what's actually happening is the sign... We won't get into that just yet. <clears throat> so those are the houses. Okay? Now, those houses are stationary. It's just... It's above us. It's based on a division of the sky. The first house represents you your body. Now, to fully understand the houses, what we have to understand is there's mandalas within mandalas within mandalas within mandalas. Circles within circles within circles within circles. So if we wanted to look at the first house and we wanted to understand what it represents on an external level, it represents your body and your health. If we look at it on the level of people in your life, it's you. If we look at it at the level of a part of the body, it's your head. In the same way, if we go, and now this, what I'm speaking is the chart that's on page six. So if we went to the second house, the external significations are food. Food is that which sustains you. 
And how do you buy food? Either with food you have, bartering, or with money. So the second house represents money and food. If we look at it at a level of people, it represents your family. What Parashara says is Katumba. It's that close family around you. When we look at it on a level of the body, it's the throat. We can keep going on other mandalas because there's multiple, multiple significations. So if we just look on the body, that first house is the head. The second is the throat. The third is the arms and shoulders. The fourth is the chest. The fifth is the torso. So in this way, we're moving through the entire body, getting to the twelfth house, which is the feet. Looking at people, we've entered another mandala of the houses. We're looking at it from another level, another circle, another cycle. And from people, the first is you. The second is close family. The third is siblings. The fourth is your mother. The fifth is children and students. The six is servants and pets. The seventh is spouse. The eighth is people that you owe money to and lenders. The ninth is father. The tenth is either your boss or the biological father. Two different houses, one who actually is playing the role of the father, one who's the biological father. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're not. Eleventh is friends. So in this way, we have, we've entered a different mandala. We're not even looking at the level of body. We're looking at the level of people in our life. In the same way, the external significations change, and we can see this based on the chart. So the houses are understood within various mandalas. And we're looking at those houses relative to those mandalas. Is, is the implication that there is a hierarchy here, that mm. you go from self, the most important one, to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then as you go down towards bill collectors, they begin to fade in importance. And no. I'm surprised that the mother being in the no, there's, position less yeah. than siblings. Yeah, no, there's no order of importance in that level. So that's coincidental. I mean, can you say that your torso is more important than your thigh? Or that the chest is more important than the head? We can't really say that... I mean, to be whole, you have to have all those parts working. To have a, a holistic life, you want to have a mother as well as you want to be able to have good credit. And credit cards, which is the eighth. I was thinking more of our... Spouse and pet. The you spouse know, and pet. That's what rang the bell. You know? <laughs> yeah, <next. laughs> no, there's no order of hierarchy there. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, that first house is the house that is called the Ascendant. And that's called Lagna in Sanskrit. So that's a general introduction to the houses. Okay, so what is the relationship of close family. Um, so close family, in traditional Indian society, most of the time the uncle still lives upstairs, the aunt and your cousins live next door, or there's, it's the family unit is very close. In Western society, instead of having the blood family be so close, we generally have certain groups of friends that are very close that we move places and we stay with. So what actually becomes family are those people who are very close and in your environment very often, who you live next to or regularly with. It's not a um, stamped and sealed, this is what family is and this is not what it is. It's a, I've seen it be very generalized and it can even open up to the level of community. Or tribe. Or tribe if you really want to take it out. that The type of clan. Now, just as the planets are holding and representing the archetype of all things, the bhavas are representing all aspects of being and existence. So anything that you can really... Any, so anything that you can think of can be connected to a planet. Any aspect of life can be somehow connected to a house.
the more we understand it. Going a little bit more into your question of hierarchies, we'll go into it a little bit more in the house chapter, but just to give you a general idea of how it's working is there's a different kind of formulation of um, gunas and elements that are making houses work together in certain ways. For example, the dharma trines, which are the fire trines, is the first house, the fifth house, and the ninth house. The first house is you. The fifth house is your children or students. The ninth house is your guru or your father. So on the level of your father, he made you. The first house. You make your children. The fifth house. And it becomes this cycle. It's a trinal cycle. Or in the ninth house, you have the guru. He teaches you the first house. You teach the, your students. Students become teachers next. And it keeps going in this cycle. Where when you were looking at the sixth house as pets, it's pets or servants. So servants also mean employees. And the tenth house is your, if we look at the trine to that, it's 2, 6, and 10. 10th ten. is your career. And the second is the bank account and savings and food, your money that you're bringing in. So there's a connection between the money you're bringing in, the employees that are working, and your career. So they're working in these, they are having a relationship to each other, but it's not hierarchical. Okay. So the houses are they always in the same position? From your location. From our perspective. From your perspective, they're always in the same position. Yes. For my lifetime or? For your lifetime. So according to what the setup was at the moment of birth, for instance, uh, house one would be always in the same position. And then everything moves through the house. Okay. So the only mobile parts are the two. And the houses are stable. Yes. Okay. When we look at this, we have to understand there's two different types of charts we're looking at. There's the natal chart, and then there's the chart of right now. In the natal chart, what the natal chart is, is when you're born, a picture of what the chart of right now, that becomes your birth chart. But at the same time, the sky is constantly changing. So that picture... Just like in a picture that's taken, that's you. These days with computers, we can manipulate a picture. And in the same way, there's all kinds of ways to manipulate charts. But bottom line is, there's a picture taken. And you don't change, you, there's a, a certain map that's shown at that time, through that picture, which becomes your natal chart. We're going to try and understand both aspects. And at first, we're going to try and understand what the houses and signs are in a moving day-to-day -day perspective. And then when we understand that the chart is a picture of that, we can understand really what that means. Some people just start with the numbers and lines and diagrams. And when it's just numbers and lines and diagrams, you're looking down at a piece of paper. But we're talking about astronomy and astrology. And where do you have to really look to understand that? you look up. So we're going to start by looking up before we start looking down. Because that looking up is what we're understanding when we are looking down. And the more we can understand it by looking up, the more it's going to actually mean when we look down. And the more connected we will be to this actual universe that we live in. So when you would be looking down, meaning when you'd be looking at a chart, knowledge of Ganita or astronomy is to allow you to look at a chart and have that as a window, become a window to the sky, what's happening in the sky. It should be. Some people, especially today, in the age of computers, they type in a birth chart and all of a sudden some numbers and lines show up on the computer and they start reading it, not fully understanding the implication of what they're reading. In the ancient times, you had to go out and calculate what was happening, where things were moving. You had to be able to understand what was happening in the sky and everything around you. 
And then you start looking and you can see that when this is happening, you understand what that means. And so when you're looking at a chart, that's your window to what's happening in the universe at that time, which is a holistic understanding of you and the universe interrelating, which we miss when we just tap it into the computer and get a chart, not understanding that when the sun is in the fourth house, it means that it's midnight. And there'll be a lesson as we go through. There's multiple lessons. Right now we're going to just begin one that taps you in. But as we go through the book, for each section, there's different astronomical practices to really get you to understand what you're looking at from an astronomical perspective.